we were sort of a day late going to the floods. Um, it happened, the newspaper was a little slow in responding. I think most of the press was at that, at that time. Um, and it was sort of all hands on deck. Everybody um, grabbed a reporter, photographer, and left. And it was just total devastation. Flooding throughout the town, mud everywhere, all throughout the buildings. I can remember coming to roads that ended. You know, the road was washed away. So we'd have to stop, turn around, and go back. You know, I think people were in shock. Um, I remember photographing a lady who they rescued, and she was holding on to her cat. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of animals were, were probably washed away, um, as, as well as people. I remember um, getting sent out right away with um, Governor Moore in the state helicopter. And I think there was a TV cameraman along and a couple other state officials, maybe the state police superintendent or something. So we flew, we flew north up through the clouds. I just remember being enveloped in clouds and heading to Parsons, where I guess the report of some of the greatest damage was at. We could see um, at one point, and I remember just looking at some pictures not long ago, um, where the river had come through and just knocked out like nine houses, I think, right in a row. And you could see, all you could see were the foundations that were left. I talked to, uh, of course, in, along the Greenbrier River then as now, there's a lot of uh, uh, vacation camps and fishing camps and so people have uh, travel trailers and uh, uh, small cabins and things like that and a lot of those got washed away. I talked to, uh, I remember one couple from Raleigh County who said they came up to see if their uh, uh, vacation camp was okay and got there just in time to watch the uh, the uh, trailer being carried away in the floodwaters. So. The night the flood actually started, we were uh, getting reports that there might be flooding around Weston and Clarksburg, and we weren't really expecting anything major anywhere else, certainly nothing of the dimensions that, that ended up happening. And uh, so, when I started making calls the following day, Tuesday I think it was, um, we began to get a, a sense of how extensive and, uh, and deadly the flood was, uh, especially in uh, places like uh, Franklin and Parsons and uh, up in the mountains there. And it's one of the problems about uh, working in Charleston, sometimes it can be, the weather can be quite different uh, 100 miles away. Uh, and, Back in the days before uh, uh, social media and the internet, it, it was really hard to keep track of things on a, on a, a, a kind of a solid state basis. There was a couple in Riverton that had a gas station, a little Exxon gas station, and it, it was just devastated. And they were in their 70s, and they just sat there in front of their station. They just, I don't think they knew what to do. I remember passing, in. there's a little town called um, One Go, and it's before you get to Seneca Rocks. There's a beautiful little white church there. I think it's a Mennonite church. And the women were there. Um, everything in that church had, you know, water had gotten into the church, into the hymnals and everything. And they had all the seats outside. They had all the hymnals outside. They were trying to save everything, try, try to dry things out, basically. Um, you know, I just remember those ladies just sort of being devastated by it. We had phone-in stories back in those days uh, and dictate what we'd, what we'd come across and 
so I had to write things down in longhand on a yellow legal pad and dictate them to someone back in Charleston. And Chris had to uh, develop his film in the in the bathroom and use this kind of what now looks seems to be a really old-fashioned process of uh, of transmitting a black and white photo uh, hooked into a the motel room's telephone and uh, transmitting photos back that way and. I remember the, the, the lodge was completely filled with people who were like the linemen for power companies and, uh, and, and tree specialists and uh, it was all people related to the flood and recovery from the flood. Everyone, it seemed to be in a state of shock that first day or two after the flood, but even, even when I talked to them a, a little bit longer, uh, I think just about everybody decided they were going to build back, and that if there's any way possible, anyway, they were going to build back. They just uh, could. I just couldn't seem to envision life uh, uh, being lived anywhere else in the town they were in, and uh, it was. I was really kind of surprised and struck by uh, uh, by how much they uh, were attached to the place they lived, and and, and how much they wanted to see it come back, and. Uh, I was also impressed by the, the work the National Guard did in, in flood recovery at that time. Uh, kind of caught my attention and they, they really helped people and did it fast. 